Okay, today we're going to be talking about the Military Armament Corporation uh, M10 or M10A1, also known as the MAC-10, even though the company never called it the MAC-10 until obviously now it actually says Ingram MAC-10 right on this commemorative model. So I guess they cave to the common nomenclature. The MAC-10 is an amazing little uh, pistol and maybe a machine pistol in its full auto configuration. This happens to be a semi-auto. And this is the commemorative model put up by the American Historical Society in the early 80s. They, they sold for around $2,400 and more for the deluxe model, which had a presentation case and other accessories. Uh, this one came with the um, uh, 130 round magazine, which extends to about here. I don't have a magazine for this right now. It comes with a fixed stock. Otherwise, it would be an SBR or short barreled rifle, because any pistol that has a, a stock on it becomes a short barrel rifle and you have to pay the tax stamp and it has to be registered as such. This one is a regular pistol with a permanently fixed um, stock for show. It has 24 karat gold uh, plated parts including the uh, barrel. Inside and out this is gold plated. This is a heavy 24 karat gold. Um, this is the US Army Special Forces commemorative and the gold plated parts are the trigger, the pins, the, the bolt um, handle, uh, the inscriptions, which says free the oppressed, and free the, the oppressed in Latin. Also the fixed stock, which is pinned, is uh, gold plated, as is the um, Allen screw that holds in the grip. The, the grips on this deluxe mo on this model, uh, commemorative model, are um, walnut, select walnut. And unlike regular MAC-10s, uh, this one is highly polished and deeply blued. And you can see uh, the nice work job they've done. Not everybody likes these kind of semi-garish type of pistols, but um, it really is a, a nice gun. If you like that thing. This is fully functional. It operates from the closed bolt. I mean, yeah, from the closed bolt. If it was open bolt, those are the full auto versions. Um, this was designed by Gordon Ingram in the 1964 uh, era, and by 1970 they were producing them. They have a very high cyclic rate of fire of 1,150 rounds a minute for 45 and 1,100 rounds approximately a minute for 9mm. The magazine for the 45 it holds 30 rounds, and for the 9mm holds 32. They also came out with an M11, which is the 380 and then they lengthen the, the M11 to accept 9 as well and it's a smaller gun. This gun is not small however and it weighs five and a half pounds just the way you see it. Uh, six and a quarter pounds with a magazine and the strap which is usually leather or fabric because in the early 70s when special forces were using these when you fire this gun um, full auto uh, you know how 45 ACP kicks, so it's starting to rise as you operate it, pop, 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 and it's going to become uncontrollable. It could actually uh, go up very fast and cause damage that you don't intend with disastrous results, obviously. So the Army called for a strap right here, this way you could hold it down. Don't forget, at that psychic rate of fire, you're looking at 19 rounds a second, so in 1.5 seconds, this is empty. You could imagine an operator bursting into a room, that's it, the gun's empty. So you could get yourself in trouble and have an empty gun in a very fast time. That's unbelievable when you think about it. Uh, this is the threaded barrel for accessories or for the suppressor. And uh, this operates by blowback design. And they were quite something when they were invented, one of the only pistols that can do that uh, back during that time frame. Uh, this one here being made in the early 90s is unfired, but it has a little wear and um, the grips are very, very large. As you can see by my hand here, that's really hard to hold on to. When this thing is loaded, you're looking at seven and three quarter pounds with 45 ACP. That's close to eight pounds. So holding it like this and with a strap and firing it works out very well. The front sight is a protected post and the rear, you look through that aperture right there, it, and it actually goes through the bolt, the sight picture. I don't know if you can see it there. But that would actually uh, uh, operate for the sighting. Uh, 